Now let's get into God's word. We want to get into the book of uh, Romans. Uh, the book of Romans is a very, very wonderful book. And I know we have shared all, uh, from the book of Romans a couple of times uh, in the past. And in the book of Romans, the title of my message is Behave Like a Christian. I know it sounds rude, but it is in the scripture. I actually took it from the scripture. It is bad for somebody to tell you behave like a Christian. So it is not me, it is the Bible. That My Bible, the, the New King James Version. The subtopic on uh, where we are going to be reading says behave like a Christian. So as we behave like a Christian, we want to look at what is this that the scripture is saying. And as we get into the book of, of, of Romans, that part of saying behave like a Christian would come out, in other words, like saying honor one another. In other words, esteem one another. I know there are people who don't honor other people. It is only them who need to be honored. Scripture says honor one another. It says esteem one another. And that is the way to behave like a Christian. You want Christ. to behave like a Christian, turn to the person to your right, to the left, tell them you honor them. Yeah, just honor them. They might not have done great and big things. They might not be known out there. But just because they are God's people, tell them that you honor them. Tell them that you esteem them. Now, honoring and esteeming would mean that you want their good. You are seeking their prosperity. You want them to succeed. That you don't have that thing that comes here when somebody is succeeding. What do you call that thing in your mother tongue? The, that big potato. And I don't know whether in Akwanga Imeiva or Mahijaiva. But don't, don't, don't have it when somebody is succeeding. Now, behaving like a Christian would mean get rid of the kewaru. And, and, and the book of Romans brings this out very well. But just a little background so that we can walk together. This book has been written by one of the greatest writers in the Bible called uh, Paul. And it is estimated that it was done in the AD 58. And, and so that you can go and study the book of Romans. I just picked it and divided it into three parts. For the sake of you studying it. And different Bibles will divide it in different ways. Chapter 1 of Romans to chapter number 8 discusses the issue of sin. It discusses about justification. Justified. Kuekwa justified. <laughs> it talks about being sanctified. In actual fact, it tells us how we can navigate that path of salvation. From a sinner who needs to acknowledge that they need the Lord, we go through the process of conversion and sanctification as we are doing life. 
anapitia sehemu na safari ya kuweza kutakazwa we are justified not because of what we did but because of what he has done for us tunawekwa haki si kwa sababu ya yale mambo tumetenda lakini kwa yale alitenda and then we are glorified na tunaweza kutukuzwa the end of salvation is glorification ah mwisho na kilele cha wokovu ni kutukuzwa the place where we will live forevermore mahali ambapo tutaishi milele where we will have bodies that will never hunger tutapata mili ambayo hatutapata njaa tena where we will not need doors to enter into a room hatutahitaji milango kuingia kwenye chumba ile bodies that will never grow old tutakuwa na mili ambayo haitazeeka bodies that will never get sick mili ambayo haitagonjeka as we go through this process of sanctification tunapoenda katika hii safari which is a stage which is a stage which we are in na hilo hiyo ndio kipindi ambacho tuko ndani yake we await glorification tunagojea kutukuzwa ah that's a nice place hapo ni mahali pazuri and that reminds us of our friends and loved ones who have passed on because they were attacked by this sickness or they had this disease or they had this complication those people who died in the lord we will see them someday and they will not be sick inatukumbusha juu ya wale wapendo wetu ambao wali eh walikufa kwa sababu ya magonjwa kadhaa tuta hawatakuwa wamegonjeka wakati they will not be paralyzed hawatakuwa wame wamepoza they will not be suffering stroke hawatakuwa na ile mambo ya mshtuko that is the place that we want to go hapo ndio mahali ambapo tunataka kwenda then chapter number 9 to chapter number 11 katika sura ya 9 mpaka Paul discuss Paul discusses with us um, the issue of unbelief that was uh, with the children of Israel Paulo anaguzia jambo ambalo ilikuwa kutoamini ambapo kulikuwa na watoto wa Israeli or the Jews as it were Wayahudi wasikuwa the way they rejected the message vile walikataa neno la Mungu and then you and I as Gentiles na wewe nami kama we got an opening to come into the saving grace tukapata nafasi ya kuingia kwenye wokovu and that that plan that God muted then na ile mpango ambaye Mungu alianzisha he has not changed hajabadilisha it still remains the plan of God for man's redemption inabaki kwa mpango wa Mungu ya kuweza kuwakomboa so we talk about uh, scripture saying that it is in your heart that you believe na guzia kwamba ni katika moyo wako ambao unaamini and you make confession na with your mouth kukiri na kwa mdomo wako we we'll, we like to quote those scriptures and then you'll be saved alafu utaweza kuokoka tunapenda sana hilo hayo maandiko and then from chapter number 12 to 16 kutoka uh, sura ya 12 hadi 16 it is a practical way of living hiyo ni, ma, ni maisha hali ya kuishi maisha uh, kikamilifu so after knowing that you are burdened with sin Ukijua and that the ulikuwa, plan of god for salvation you have received it ulikuwa na mwenye dhambi alafu ukapata mpango wa kukombolewa na umepokea then there is a way that scripture did kuna, requires that you live kuna vile uh, maandiko yanahitaji ukaweze kuishi So the gospel ought to affect our social engagements with people. Ah uh, injini na istahili iweze kuathiri vile tunashirikiana na watu. Our social fabric today needs to be to be it needs to be touched by the gospel like uh, it did with the Romans. Maisha yetu ya kijamii na istahili ikaguzwe na injini kama vile ilifanyika wakati wa Warumi. If the gospel that we have received is not affecting the way we do life kama uh, ile injili tumepokea haiguzi maisha yetu vile tunaishi maisha yetu then there is a problem somewhere basi kuna shida mahali and i can bet the problem is not with the word the problem is with us who are living out that practical naweza kusema uh, shida si kwa dunia lakini ni sisi so the motivation for this uh, ile uh, uh, so the motivation that we need to have ile is uh, to do life is to is to live with one another ni kwa kuishi pamoja na mwingine loving god tukipenda mungu and exhibiting god's love na tukiweza kudhihirisha upendo wa mungu to believers and unbelievers alike kwa wale wasioamini na wale walioamini i know there are some of us who just love the believers najua kuna baadhi yetu tunapenda tu wale ambao wameokoka in actual fact you don't need to love the believers hata si lazima upende waumini they are already loved by god wale hata tayari wanapendwa na mungu they are unbelievers wale ambao hawajaamini those are the ones that we need to love how ndio tunastahili tukawapende those are the people that we need to invite to church how ndio tunastahili tukawalike kanisani those are the people that we need to go to and interact with them and that they, they can see there is a difference how between somebody who is born again and one who is how not how ndio tunastahili kushirikiana nao na wakaweze kuona kuna tofauti kati ya wale waliookoka na wale hawajaokoka so our love from god and for god 
upendo wetu kutoka kwa Mungu na kwa Mungu and toward other people na kwa wale wengine will be seen in how we honor them itaonekana kupitia vile tunawaheshimu how we honor our neighbors vile tunaheshimu majirani zetu how we honor the people in the world that we live in vile tunawaheshimu watu wale ambao tunaishi pamoja na wao allow me therefore to read scriptures in the book of romans chapter number 12 Niruhusu nikasome Biblia katika kitabu cha Warumi 12 and we we'll just pick the things that Paul talks about in that portion of scripture. Na tunachukua yale mambo ambayo Paulo aligusia katika hayo maandiko. We'll be reading from verse number 9 to verse number 21. Tunasoma kutoka mstari wa 9 mpaka wa 21. This is what scripture says. Maandiko yanasema hivi. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor giving preference to one another. It says in verse number 11, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. Distributing to the needs of the saints given to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. It says, be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Verse 17 says, repay no evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. He says, if it is possible as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Verse number 19 says, Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Verse number 20 says, Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink for in doing so or in so doing you will heap coals of fire on his head verse number 21 says do not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good amen now just getting into you know the meat of that uh, uh, portion of scripture we start by seeing in verse number 9 he says, love without hypocrisy. Turn to your neighbor, tell them, love without hypocrisy. Remember, we are looking at behaving, behaving, uh, behaving, uh, very good, behaving. Now, Christians love without hypocrisy. Wale wa Kristo wanapenda bila unafiki. Now who is a hypocrite? Ni nani mnafiki? Who is a hypocrite? Ni nani mnafiki? Ask your neighbor who is a hypocrite. Uliza jirani yako mnafiki. I'm sure they're not going to say it is you. Pengine hawatasema ni wewe. Najua na niko na hakika hawatasema ni wewe. You know the person who says something but they don't mean it? Wanasema kitu na hawamaanishi. Is that a hypocrite? That could be a liar. Anyhow, a hypocrite Mnafiki is someone pretending to be something that he or she is not. And there is a motivation for this. They do it so that they can receive recognition. Or so that they can gain something. Hypocrisy comes as a result of pride. We have enough proud people in this world. People who act, who play act. You know all the actors are hypocrites? Ah, a hypocrite in other, in, in other definitions is, a, is an actor. Do you see people who come on stage and they are acting who they are not? That, that is, that is hypocrisy. We are not saying that we will not act. When we were a little younger, 
wakati tulikuwa wa changa kiasi eh hey, hata hey, naona tuko hapo wakati tulikuwa wachanga kitu <laughs> There was something that we used to do called combating. You know, you know komba? Not, 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 not borrowing money. Ukomba. For those that understand. Can you komba? Can, can you show your neighbor? This is called combing. <laughs> combating. <laughs> so that something, something will be done for you. Even in school. Hata shule. A teacher has come into class. And I know my interpreter is a teacher. Let me tell you what we used to do. And what they are doing behind your back. You are there, you are trying to help the students. And they are listening to you. But as soon as you turn, they come by you. So they were acting what they are not. Those are hypocrites. And scripture is telling us this is not a behavior of Christians. And Paul takes time to talk about it. He says, don't be hypocrites when you love. Love people for who they are. Because they are God's people. Don't just love the people who do good things to you. In actual fact, let me say this. Don't just love people because they tell you good things. Maybe you need those people who don't just tell you the good things that you need to hear. You know, some time ago we were seated in, in, in one of the seminars and workshops here. And one of the trainers told us feedback is food for champions. Yeah, you, you are doing something, you, you, are, you, you are engaged in, in a thing, and then people are giving you feedback. You organize, you organize an event, and then after the event, we are seated, we are giving you feedback. Or maybe even the worship team. I know worship team gives feedback when they, they sit in their place. We also give feedback as preachers. Somebody will tell you what you said was wrong. Don't say that again. If you have to say it, say it in this way. Now that feedback is not supposed to make you feel useless. They are, they are not telling you because they hate you. They are telling you because they want you to improve. Now, woe to those of us who don't want to receive feedback. Because you will remain stuck at the same point. Now, the way of loving you as a Christian is to tell you what you need to hear. What you must hear. So we will love without hypocrisy. I know there are people who we say are un unlovable. But they are God's people. God loves them. We can only love because we have received love from God. Anything else is falling short. He continues to say in the same verse. Abhor what is evil. We need to get to the place of abhorring evil. Now, abhorring evil is hating the appearance of it. It is even avoiding to get into mentioning what is evil. Now, to abhor is to be disgusted about something. You, have, you, hate, you hate it and you're disgusted about it. Now, some of us don't abhor evil. An example of people who didn't abhor evil is our brother Lot. He was, he was not a, a sinner. 
But he was okay living amongst people who were doing all sorts of things. In actual fact, scripture would record that when uh, they were fleeing or they, when they were being evacuated. You know that 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 uh, uh, that account of Sodom and Gomorrah. And there was a man of God who was praying that there would be a few people who would be found who are faithful and that God would save the city. And God engaged him and said, oh, let's do this. Yeah, how many people do you think are there? And then they continued and they went on and on until he got to a place where he said, well, I think uh, I give up. When the angels are coming to evacuate Lot and his family, they get to a point, even with the instructions that they were given, because they, have, they had lived in a place and in an environment where they didn't abhor evil. The wife, the wife to our brother Lot turned back. Now the original meaning of that turning back he wasn't, she wasn't turning back because she was sorry about Sodom and Gomorrah. The original meaning of the turning back that she did was that of we, we miss that place. And suddenly, scriptures would record that he she turned into um, a salt stone. The people who went to Israel, you saw it. And Scripture continues to say, cling to what is good. Clinging to what is good would simply mean that you, 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 you notice the good things that there is an intensity of wanting to do the good things and that you embrace what is good because, because your hope is in that good. For you to keep alive, you need to cling into what is good. Now, the, that which is good is from the Lord. So that verse has, is, is so loaded. It says, let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. And we cannot do any less. Verse number 10. It says, be kindly affectionate to one another. He says, with brotherly love, in honor, giving preference one to another. So being kindly affectionate to one another would mean that you prefer other people better than you. Have you gone to places where you, you needed to queue? Thank God for, for these days uh, where we have gone. Uh, uh, technology has helped us. We are coming from a place where we, we, we were queuing for everything. You go to the bank and you want to withdraw some money. The one who is withdrawing 10,000, 50,000. And the one who is, who is withdrawing 1,000. To Can you imagine that country? You know that country? Hi, you are here. So when you get to that place, and you are queuing, you tell your neighbor, please go fast. 
that is preferring one another you are allowing them to take the first place when a few years ago when we were we, we were very uncivilized in the way we used to board matatus <laughs> i remember there was a time we used to get into the bus and there were people who were seated who had who had more money na kuna watu walikuwa wamekaa ambao walikuwa na pesa zaidi no, more money was five shillings. I remember those days from Githurai. You would be the first to get into the bus. Because you would pay three shillings to town. You choose to sit, uh, to, to stand. So, Babu, you are paying five, five shillings. For those that don't know, this is history. You can record. So, so we were paying three shillings from Githurai to town. But there are guys who had money. They would not think about, uh, they would just come and sit down. And they paid five bob. I know you are asking, ah, yes. Those days, getting into a matatu, matatu, it was survival for the fittest. It didn't matter whether it was raining or not. Both ways, going to work in the morning and coming from work in the evening. Until they got, we got to a place where people became a bit more civilized, they started queuing. But even with the queuing, it would get to a place where the queue would just disappear suddenly and then people are rushing into the vehicle and they would step on each other as you get into the vehicle. Now, preferring one another would mean allow them to go first then you'll come later hello purpose to prefer other people better than you he continues to say do not be lagging in diligence do not lag in diligence. Whatever you find, you, you, you need to give it your best shot. Whatever you do, do it with all that you know. Do it with, do it with all your heart. In other words, Paul is saying for you as a Christian, your behavior should be of doing the best in whatever you do. Enough, enough times I have heard people say, I don't want to employ Christians. And that is not a good thing. We need to change things. People need to be looking for Christians to employ them and to give them assignments. But because we listen and we hear from God and we are in communication with God, so we, we, we just... We just mediocre. We purport to know things that other people don't know. Including your employer. You, you are looking at your employer like, you know, I can call fire on you. Please, Please be diligent. Be diligent in what you are doing. And we are sending you to those places so that you go and wakilisha us. So that it shall not be said that Christians are the most slothful. When we go to heaven, we shall not work. The work in heaven is to praise the Lord. No, this is the place where we need to work. Meet deadlines. Increase, increase revenue for your organization. Come up with ideas of how to do different things. It is here on this earth. So please stop being slothful. Tell your neighbor, don't be lazy. Don't just be there. 
I can see the people who are looking at me like she hey, please tell them again stop Naona watu ambao wananitazama hivi kuwa usikue mzembe You don't want just to do average you want to do much more than that you want to do your best Do your best ambayo tu ni vuguvugu tu unataka kufanya ile bora zaidi It is not just it is where God has placed you Ni mahali pale Mungu amekuweka Kama wewe ni mtu wa kiosk You are a kiosk person Let us come to your kiosk and see diligence Watch to let us come Watch to kaja kwa kiosk yako tukaona unatenda The way you have arranged your bananas and onions and, You know you know there are some kiosks that you don't know what you are buying and where it is <laughs> like this they well if you're in this church please forgive me there's this there's some guy who does business and everything in their vehicle that they use is 30 shillings si juu kama umeona wewe jamaa kila kitu katika gari lake ni kina gari i think it is it is his idea of marketing ah pengine hiyo ni idea yake ya kuweza kuuza msiniangalie hivi inakuanga hapa inaenda hivi inaenda hivi there is a vehicle that inazunguka huko kwetu What goes around this place everything is startable kila kitu kinauzwa shilingi so, uh, the latin in that big cut katika hilo gari katika hilo kuna kichana katika <laughs> hiyo kuna kuanga na vitu za plastic hapo ndani kuna kuanga na tungua yeah, hapo ndani plastic things there are some pieces of cloth the people who come to that cut Uh, wale ambao wanakuja kwenye huo uh, the ones who decide where my ten. whatever i want is uh, wao ndio wanatambuanga kwenye kitu chenye wanataka kiko wapi there are headbands for the ladies kuna vitu vya kufunga kichwa kwa vya uh, unfortunately the, the, the people that i see surrounding that car most of them are ladies uh, na wale wengi naonanga kwenye huo mkokoteni wanakuanga there are some toys for the, there are some toys for the kids kuna vitu vya kucheza vya watoto all of them in one pot kila kitu kimewekwa pamoja take what you want pay that bob go kwa kila kila unataka lipa shilingi 30 be, be, di, be diligent ah tukaweze kuwa na watu wa kuweka bidii let us come to your place and find some order acha tuje kwako tukapate kuna mpango let people talk about your grocery when they are out there if you want Watcha. this if you want fresh whatever go Watcha to acha watu wakaongea juu ya duka lako vile limepangwa vizuri kama unataka kitu fulani uko pale So do not be lagging in diligence that is christian Kwe behavior watu kuwa christian, christian behavior would call us not to lag in diligence uh, tabia zetu kama wa kristo isikuwe tutakosa and i could go on and on and on it says rejoice endelea, rejoice endelea. in the hope that Uka, you have ukaweza kufurahia katika uh, tumaini ambalo uko nalo simply saying be excited about what you believe in ya kwamba ukasisimuke kuhusu kile ambacho unaamini remember we talked about uh, romans chapter 1 through to verse 8 to chapter 8 kutoka sura ya kwanza mpaka sura ya 8 talking about uh, doctrine and the things that you believe in that also will will, will uh, determine your character and behavior ambayo inagusia kuhusu mafundisho ambayo itaweza ku uh, kuleta tabia zako Now if I know I have come into a faith that at the end of the day I know my end is in heaven Ya kwa kama nita najua ya kwamba ningeingia kwenye imani ambayo mwisho wake ni mbinguni In between here Hapa katikati Before I'm translated to heaven Kabla sijapelekwa kule mbinguni I want to enjoy what I'm doing Nataka kuweza kufurahia yale ambayo nafanya I want to be excited nafani. about life Nataka kusisimuka kuhusu maisha I want to enjoy my family Nataka kufurahia familia yangu Especially my wife uh, I want to enjoy my children. Nataka kufurahia watoto wangu. Ah, you want to enjoy what you're doing. Ni lazima ukaweze kufurahia kile ambacho unafanya. If you report to a place of work that you're feeling like I, I I think if I was given an opportunity I would bomb this place. Kama unaenda mahali ambapo una sijihisi kwamba kama ningeweza patiwa nafasi naweza rusha bomu kwenye hapa mahali hapa. Resign. Toka. Toka mahali hapo. This for your own good. Ni hiyo ni kitu ambacho ni cha manufaa kwako. That reminds me of something uh, a young man told me not long ago. Kuna kijana mmoja aliniambia kitu. Juzi tu. I realized but I realized uh, what I told that young man I realized much much later in life. Ah uh, niliona kile nilimwambia uh, niliona hiyo kitu uh, baadaye. When you get married. Wakati unaoa those of us who are between one and six years of marriage wale ambao wako katikati ya mwaka mmoja na miaka sita ya ndoa cinema it is time to flex your muscles you want to occupy space you want to say this is my territory sasa hiyo unataka kuingia kwenye himaya hiyo na kuweza kujishikia nafasi yako if you listen to this it will help you 
ukisikiliza haya utaweza kukusaidia you have no time to waste hakuna wakati wa kupoteza you have no time to fight with your wife hakuna wakati wa kupigana na bibi yako in your thinking katika mafikira yako you will live with this person for the next 50 60 years utaishi na huyo mtu miaka takriban 50 uh, um, Sitini. So the best you can do is to cultivate for an environment that you're going to enjoy yourself. Nile jambo bora ni kuweza kutafuta mazingara ambayo atakuwezesha kufurahia. Of course there is a twist to that which is is very serious. Kuna kitu ambacho ni kinyume na hayo. God has blessed you with a spouse. Mungu amekupatia mke ama mwana. For the first six years you have just been fighting. No, this is I'm supposed to do this. This is we are supposed to go home every Christmas. We went to your home. I don't know what. I don't know this. And then you realize God gave you that person to be there for only those six years. And then they are done with life and they go to heaven. Toweka anaenda mbinguni. What a waste. Hiyo ni mambo ya ku. So if I'm going to live with my wife until when we are 80. Kama nitaishi na mke wangu mpaka miaka 80 na miaka 90. I want to be a happy man. Mimi nataka kuwa mtu ambaye ako na furaha. When we will be asking nani huyo amekuja? You actually don't know who has knocked on the door. You ask him. Pengine ujui hata ni nani amebisha mlango. Ni Johan, ni Jeff. Pengine ni Johan, pengine ni Enjoy the time that you have. Ah, furahia na nafasi na wakati ambao Mungu amekupea. Rejoice in the faith that you have come in. Furahia katika imani ambayo umeingia God has given us a faith that is not like any other. Mungu ametupatia imani ambayo ni When you appear before people they will see that your faith is working on you. Ah, wakati unaonekana mbele ya watu wanaona ya kwamba hiyo imani inakusaidia. We have no time to uh, talk about being patient in tribulations because they will come that because you know your end you are able to go through a trying moment and come out victorious when we we we, we face persecution whatever persecution could be for you you do not curse people Hutaweza kulaani watu. You want to bless people. Utawabariki. We will rejoice with those who are rejoicing. Tutafurahia pamoja na wale ambao wanafurahia. We will weep with those who are weeping. Tutalia pamoja na wale wanalia. Meaning that we identify with the issues that people are going through. Ya kwamba tutaweza kushikamana na watu kuhusu mambo ya matukio ambayo wako nayo We empathize with people. Tutaweza ku waonea huruma watu. We are talking about being of the same mind. Tunaongea juu ya kuwa na wa That, that you're not thinking sababa, you're not thinking of yourself more highly than you are hutafikiria juu yako kuwa wa maana kushinda wale wengine that you associate with the humble utaweza ku shirikiana na wale ambao ni wanyenyekevu do not be wise in your own opinion Uta, do not be wise in your own opinion hutakuwa na hekima kama ukuta jione ya kwamba uko na hekima sana that portion of scripture tells us repay no evil for evil Uh, itasema ya kwamba usilipie mabaya kwa mabaya have regard for good things in the sight of all men unaweza kufikiria juu ya mambo mazuri it actually tells us that as much as it depends on you and it is possible for you to do this inasema ya kwamba ya kwamba utaweza uko na uwezo wa kufanya mambo haya be at peace with all men ukaweza kuwa na amani na watu wote when talks about it is in your place if it depends on you be at peace with all men ya kwamba kama itawezekana ukaweza kuwa na amani na watu wote then it means that is a possibility ya kwamba itamaanisha ya kwamba hilo ni jambo linaweza how about when it talks about feeding your your your, your enemy na mambo ya kuweza kulisha wale ambao ni watu if your enemy is hungry feed them kama adui yako ako na njaa mpe chakula you know that is very interesting because hilo ni um, jambo la kushangaza sana you know, some of these things that people post i don't know whether it was a meme a real or something i saw it somewhere mambo ambayo watu wanaweka kwa mitadao and 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 this this person was saying pray for your enemies and love them ah uh, huyo mtu alikuwa anasema ombea ndui zako na ukawapende of course they say so that they can see you prospering ndio <laughs> wanasema ni ndio wakaweza kuona ukifanikiwa but but they also said something that i also thought because you are also an enemy to somebody ah uh, lakini wakasema kwa sababu wewe pia ni adui wa mtu fulani So when when you wish your enemies bad things uh, wakati unaombea wa, maadui wako wakapata mambo mabaya 
there is somebody else who is wishing you bad things. Kuna mtu ambaye anakuombea pia mambo mabaya. So pray for your enemy. Kwa hivyo ombea adui wako. Feed them when they are hungry. Ukawapecha kula wakati wa na njaa. That is behaving like a Christian. Hiyo ni kuwa na tabia ya mkristo. It says do not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good. Inasema kwamba usishindwe na madhambi lakini ukaweza kushinda dhambi kwa mazuri. When Paul comes to the end of that discourse he says do not allow evil to overcome you. You have the power, you have the ability to overcome evil with good. Paulo anasema kwamba tuna nguvu za kushinda mabaya kwa mazuri. Remember these things were written to the church in Rome. Uh, kwenye, Ro- and Paul wrote to the church in Rome long before even he went there. Na Paulo aliandikia kanisa la Roma kabla hajaenda pale. And Rome was a set up like what we have here in the, uh, the city of Nairobi. Roma ilikuwa kama vile tuko hapa katika jiji la Nairobi. An advanced place. Uh, mahali ambapo pameendelea. A superpower then. Ah uh, ilikuwa mahali pa nguvu sana. Where there were many people. Kulikuwa na watu wengi. He tells the church there. Anaambia kanisa pale. Do not allow evil to overcome. Usiruhusu mabaya yakaweze kukushinda. My proposition is this. Ah ombi langu ni hivi. My proposition is this. Ah uh, mimi vile naona ni hivi. It is not possible for you to overcome evil with good unless you have plugged in into the plan of God for salvation. Haiwezekani kuweza kushinda mabaya kama hujaweza kuingia katika mambo ya wokovu. And the book of Romans Katika kitabu cha Warumi like we said is a full gospel. Hiyo ni injili tosha. It tells us that we are lost in sin none of us is righteous we Kitabu are all kitambia, slothful sinners ya kwamba sisi wote tumepotelea katika dhambi hakuna mwenye haki pale Romans chapter 3 verse 23 uh, Warumi 3 mstari wa 23 for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory ya kwamba wote wametenda dhambi na kupungukiwa a very bad place for human beings to be ni mahali pabaya sana kwa binadamu kuwa it was the same with the romans ilikuwa pale ilikuwa vile kwa Warumi it is a truth for us today na hata leo ni kitu ambacho kitakuwa any one of us who is here yule yote ambaye yako mahali we have fallen short of the glory of god tumepungukiwa na utukufu wa we are only able to amount to anything because of the grace of god tunaweza kuwa kitu kwa sababu ya neema ya mungu but the lord didn't leave us there lakini mungu hakutuacha pale he provided romans chapter number 5 alipeana warumi 5 that while we were yet lost in sin wakati ya kwamba wakati tulikuwa tumepotea kwenye dhambi god demonstrated his love mungu alidhihirisha upendo wake that he gave jesus christ to die for us akatupatia yesu kristo akafe kwa ajili yetu because if you do not accept that gift of god kwa sababu kama hutapokea ile zawadi ya mungu roman 6:23 tells us ah warumi 6:23 inasema that there is a wage for sin ya kwamba kuna adhambu ya ya dhambi and that the wages of sin is death ya kwamba uh, ile adhambu ni kifo but let us not look at the wages of sin wacha tusiweze kuangalia adhambu ya ya dhambi let us not just focus on the wages of sin tusiangalie tu mambo ya adhabu ya dhambi look at the gift of god in the same same line wacha tukaangalie uh, uh, zawadi ya mungu katika that mstari huo say, huo that scripture says that the gift of god is eternal life ya kwamba zawadi ya mungu ni uzima wa milele and so if you're arguing is it ya- true is it kama unauliza unangana na adventure ah uh, pengine pengine kuwe that there is a gift of god ya kwamba kuna zawadi ya mungu which is eternal life ya kwamba ni uzima wa milele i want to go for it nataka kwenda nikaupoke you want to go for it nataka kwenda nikapoke there is a gift that god has for those that will trust in him kuna uh, zawadi ya yale mungu amepea wale ambao wanamwamini so how do we do that tutafanye hile hilo vipi in the book of romans chapter number 10 ah uh, katika warumi 10 it is with the heart that we believe ni kwa moyo ambao tunaamini you don't believe with your mind you believe with your heart uamini kwa akili zako lakini ni kwa moyo wako then you confess tena unaweza kukiri and then you will be saved na tena unaweza kuokolewa it is with your heart that you believe ni kwa moyo wako unaamini unto righteousness na ukawekwa haki and with your mouth you confess na unaweza kukiri kwa mdomo wako and you are saved na ukaweza kuokolewa Scripture promises us. Maandiko yanatuahidi. In the book of Romans chapter 10 and verse number 11. Katika Warumi 10 mstari wa 11. Scripture says whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. Maandiko yanasema kwamba yeyote ambaye anaamini Mungu hatatahayarika. In this life? Katika maisha haya. And in the life to come. Na katika maisha ambayo yanakuja. Be 
behave like a Christian. Ukaweza katika maisha haya ukaweza kutembea kama Mkristo. Behaving like a Christian. Kutembea kama Mkristo. Can only be possible. Inawezekana tu. When we have trusted in the Lord Jesus. Atukiwa tumeamini Mungu. He has provided a way. Tu, yesu ametupatia njia. For us to get there. Ndio tukaweza kufika pale. Otherwise you behave like anybody else out there. Kama unaweza kutembea kama mtu mwingine yote pale. Otherwise you will behave like anybody else out there. Uh, lakini utaweza kutembea kama mtu mwingine yote pale you will, nje. You will claim to be a Christian. Utaweza kusema mimi ni Mkristo. But the people will give you a feedback. Lakini watu watakutolea maoni yao. Your Christianity has a problem. Na watakwambia Ukristo wako uko na shida fulani. And so I want us to get to that place. Na mimi nataka tukaweza kufika mahali pale. That place that we call the place of soul searching. Tukafike mahali pale pa kuweza kujichunguza. You're looking into your heart. Unaangalia moyo wako. We have said that it is in your heart that you believe. Tumesema ya kwamba ni katika moyo wako unaweza kuamini. And to righteousness. Ah na ukaweza kufanyika Then you confess with your mouth. Na unaweza kukiri kwa mdomo wako. And you will be saved. Na utaweza kuokolewa. Have you believed in your heart? Umeweza kuamini katika moyo wako? Have, have you believed that God has a plan to redeem you and me. Umeweza kuamini ya kwamba Mungu wako na mpango wa kukukombaa wewe na mimi. When we plug into this plan of God. Tukiweza kujishikanisha kwenye huu mpango wa Mungu. Romans chapter number 12. Ah uh, Warumi uh, sura ya 12. Where it starts by saying we are living sacrifices. Mahali ambapo inasema ya kwamba sisi ni dhabihu ambazo ziko hai. We will be able to do life. Tutaweza kuendeleza maisha yetu. And do it God's way. Na kuendeleza maisha katika njia ya kiungu. Are you there you have not given your life to Jesus? Uko pale na hujatoa maisha yako kwa Mungu. It is in your heart that you believe. Ni katika moyo wako utaweza kuamini. And then you make confession with your mouth. Alafu utaweza kukiri kwa mdomo wako. And you will be saved. Na utaweza kuokolewa. Allow me to lead us in this prayer. Ah, niruhusu nikaweze kuwaongoza katika hili ombi. We are going to do it all of us. Tutaweza kufanya hili ombi sisi wote. Because it is possible for us to be seated in here. Kwa sababu inawezekana tumekaa mahali hapa. The enemy has realized that you will never come up here to confess. Na pengine adui ameamua kwamba hutawahi kuja hapa mbele kuweza kukiri. And like we are saying we have to overcome evil with good. Ni lazima tukaweza kushinda dhambi na yale mazuri. If you are in our service through uh, the online kama ume uko katika ibada hii kupitia mitandao We also invite you to make this confession. Pia wewe tunakukaribisha ukaweza kufanya hili. Doesn't u- matter where you are you're, you're receiving us from. Haijarishi unatupokea kutoka wapi? From every corner of this continent. Ah uh, pengine kutoka pembe yote ya hili bara. And the universe. Uh, na dunia nzima. It is possible you are receiving us. Pengine unatupokea. And you, need, you need to make this confession. Unastahili kufanya hili you want to say after me lord jesus utasema mimi yangu bwana yesu let me do this allow us to say this prayer and you're saying after me lord jesus i come to you this morning i acknowledge i'm a sinner who needs to be forgiven i give my life to you i allow you to come into my heart and make me your child from this day onwards i am born again i will call you father you will call me son write my name in the book of life cause me to rejoice in the life that i am coming into i give myself to you with everything that i have In everything that I am I submit myself to you in the name of God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Spirit Father in the name of Jesus it is possible that there are people who have made that prayer for the very first time in their lives We pray that as they start this journey of faith and as it was they start behaving like Christians that you will walk with every one of us those that are in this walk already 
kama wale ambao wako katika hii safari we pray that we will measure up to what you are expecting of us naomba ukaweza kufikia viwango ambavyo unatarajia not because of our own abilities si kwa sababu ya nguvu zetu but because we have surrendered ourselves to you lakini kwa sababu tumejia chilia kwako oh, we thank you and we honor you tuakushukuru na tunakuheshimu in jesus name we pray katika jina la yesu tunaomba amen